Yes, what you see. Iceberg, right ahead! Thank you. What's up, homies? Today's video is going to take a deep dive into the Bitcoin Ordinals Iceberg. If you're not familiar with iceberg style videos, the concept is basically to start at the top with the most well-known example of the subject, then to move down to more obscure examples. So for this iceberg, we're going to be looking at the new shiny toy in the NFT industry, Bitcoin Ordinals. Bitcoin ordinals have been surging in popularity and value over the past 30 days, and people are starting to take notice. But the new BRC20 token standard has led to other similar innovations that may prove to be more valuable in the long run. This video is going to go over several different protocols that people are using to create new cryptocurrencies and NFTs and show you how to mint and purchase on each of those protocols. And we'll also take a look at the current markets for all of them and the gas fees. So to start us off, the top of our ordinal iceberg is going to be the BRC20 Bitcoin ordinals themselves. The BRC20 is Bitcoin's version of Ethereum's ERC20 token standard that has been made possible by the recent Taproot update to Bitcoin. To put it simply, each block of the Bitcoin blockchain is made up of smaller blocks called Satoshis. These Satoshis are indexed and numbered so JSON files can be inscribed onto them. The BRC20 protocol is new and it's not yet an approved standard like ERC20 and it still has some limited functionality. For example, currently users are only able to mint, deploy, and transfer tokens. There are two types of BRC20 tokens. You got cryptocurrencies and then you got the ordinals themselves. Ordi was the first cryptocurrency token created with BRC20, so it's one of the most popular. And of course, Pepe and Meme are a couple of the popular tokens on BRC20 as well. The two main markets I've been using for Bitcoin ordinals are ordinalswallet.com and Magic Eden. Ordinals Wallet is a new market created for the sole purpose of BRC20 tokens, whereas Magic Eden has been around for years and is one of the top markets for Solana NFTs. Ordinals Wallets has nice sort features to help search for collections that might be worth buying into. I like to sort by the lowest floor and research each of the projects that look like they might have some potential. It's always smart to do research on Twitter on projects that you find before buying into them. When I was looking for ordinals to pick up for the first time, this is what I did to pick out which ordinals to buy. There were lots of options, but when I tried researching them on Twitter, a lot of them had no mentions for months or no mentions at all. A couple that I found and researched though did show some potential. For example, the Bitcoin Pandas are created by OrdKit, and that's a website used by collection creators to launch their projects. So Panda holders get whitelisted and airdrops a lot, so I had a feeling that picking these up at 30 bucks each would end up paying off. Another example of this were the Friendless Ordinals. After purchasing a couple of those Bitcoin Pandas, I had less than 10 bucks worth of Bitcoin in my wallet, so I was looking for something very cheap to grab. There are plenty of cheap collections, but only one of them had a lot of positive information about them on Twitter, and it was Friendless. I could see from the Friendless Twitter and their Discord that they had plans for the project, so I spent my remaining 10 bucks in my account on the Friendless Ordinal, and the floor for these are now over $150. Whereas the other cheap ordinals that I was looking at at the time are still very cheap. A lot of the ordinal collections appear on Magic Eden that won't appear on Ordinal's wallet, so that's another good marketplace to look for them at. In order to see ordinals on Magic Eden, you'll have to navigate to their website and click on the Bitcoin icon. You can see the most popular ordinal collections on the front page, and you can search for any collection that you see on Ordinal's wallet on Magic Eden as well. The wallets mostly used for Bitcoin ordinals are Xverse and Unisat. When you sign up to the Ordinal's wallet website, if you don't have a wallet to import, it will create a wallet for you. And if you have an Ordinal's wallet and you want to import it into a Unisat or Xverse wallet, it's a little tricky, so I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide real quick. On ordinalswallet.com, go to your profile, then click on Settings. Then click on View Recovery Phrase. At the bottom of that page, you'll see a button for Advanced. Click on that, and there you're going to see several private keys. The top private key is called WIF Private Key. That's the one you need, so copy that one or write it down. Next, you want to pull up your Unisat or Xverse wallet, and then click on the top right icon to switch wallet and select Import with Private Key. Then you paste that WIF Private Key into the text box and click Import, and your wallet will be imported. In order to mint new Bitcoin ordinals when they drop, a couple of platforms that you can use are Magic Eden and then OrdKit, which I mentioned earlier. I've never minted a new collection on Magic Eden, but I know that OrdKit has a $10 fee for minting along with whatever the project is charging, which a lot of times is zero because it's a free mint. You can use OrdKit's active mint page, which I'll link in the description below to keep track of their upcoming mints. And you can use Twitter, of course, and try to follow some of the leaders in the community to find new projects when they happen. 
when it comes to the gas fees for these Bitcoin ordinals, the gas fees to mint are usually around 10 bucks, but there are no gas fees when it comes to buying and selling on these markets. However, the markets themselves do have fees which are usually below $10. All right, before we move on to the next layer of the iceberg, just keep in mind that a lot of people in the crypto space see Bitcoin ordinals and similar tokens to be the same thing as meme coins. So always be cautious when investing in speculative assets such as these. And of course, everything on my channel is for educational and entertainment purposes only, and nothing I say is financial advice. All right, y'all, the second layer of the Bitcoin ordinal iceberg aren't ordinals at all. They're stamps. SRC20 is a protocol created using the same idea as BRC20, except unlike BRC20, this SRC20 data is stored on spendable data transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain. That just means that the Bitcoin stamps can never be removed from the blockchain because all the data is already permanently stored, but it also means that you can only store a small amount of data, no more than 5 kilobytes. The first token created with the SRC20 standard is Kevin. So like already to BRC20, Kevin is currently the most popular token. And the wallet I use to store my SRC20 stamps is the free wallet at freewallet.io. Once you create that wallet, you can use the market at rarestamp.xyz to find and purchase SRC20 tokens. This is a new technology, so the buying process is a bit complicated and I'll walk you through it. First, you're going to go to that website I just mentioned, rarestamp.xyz, to find a collection you'd like to buy into. And just like with ordinals, be sure to research each collection before you start buying the stamps. I like to use the Collections tab at the top there to find stamps that I might be interested in purchasing. In the market, the stamps with the prices listed underneath them are the only ones that are available for purchase. So once you found one that you like, click on it, and then click on this button right here to enter the purchasing screen. From this page, the first thing you want to do is check the give quantity amount and make sure that it's equal to one. The give quantity function is what sends the NFT to your wallet once you've fulfilled the requirement of sending the exact amount of Bitcoin to that wallet. So next, you're going to copy that Bitcoin address on the page and use your wallet at freewallet.io to send the exact amount of Bitcoin required. Be sure to copy the Bitcoin amount so that you don't make any mistakes. Within an hour or so, the stamp will appear in your wallet. SRC20 Bitcoin stamps have been rising in popularity pretty fast. According to the Twitter account Stamp Punks, a new SRC20 market is currently in the works and it has been mentioned uh, more often in mainstream crypto reporting. Alright y'all, moving down to the next layer of the Bitcoin ordinal iceberg, it's ORC20 tokens. The ORC20 token standard was created to enhance and be compatible with the BRC20 token standard. ORC20 tokens have a lot of advantages over BRC20s, including size and flexibility. However, it's a brand new protocol and there aren't any markets set up for trading yet, but you can begin minting tokens already. I used my Unisat wallet to mint some ORC20 tokens and the process was pretty simple. First, you got to go to your Unisat wallet and then click on the inscribe button. And from there, you're going to click on the text button. Next, you're going to paste the project code of the cryptocurrency on ORC20 that you want to mint, and I'll give you a link to all the project codes below. Once you've picked which token you want to mint and you've pasted the project code into the text box, just make sure that single is selected and then click on next. Then you'll click on next again and select the gas fees that you want to use. Then just click select and pay to complete the transaction. Be sure that after you click select and pay that you go to your wallet to confirm the transaction. I use the project code ORDI just as a test run to mint a little bit for myself, but keep in mind that ORDI on ORC20 is a completely different token than ORDI on BRC20. So once you've completed this transaction for your ORC20 tokens, you're going to receive the inscription for your tokens, but since there isn't currently a market or an indexer available for ORC20s, that's all you'll have at the time until one is created. And then the final layer of our Bitcoin ordinal iceberg are DRC20 tokens. DRC20 tokens take the concept of the BRC20 token standard and apply it to the Dogecoin blockchain. Blocks of the Dogecoin blockchain are made up of smaller blocks and they call these sheebs. And the NFTs created on these are called Doganals or Doge Cardinals. And over the last few days, daily transaction volume for the Doge blockchain has spiked due to the adoption of these new assets. You can use the Depal Dogecoin wallet at depalwallet.io or Very Wolf wallet if you want to mint your own DRC20 tokens. After you create an account and deposit Dogecoin, you can mint tokens with DRC20 using the drc20.org website that I'm going to link in the description below. This website will show you what the top tokens are and you can use the hot minting tab to see what's currently available. 
If you see tokens on the list that are 100% minted, that means these tokens are sold out and no more can be minted. So you need to find a token that you're interested in that is still available. Remember to research the tokens before you buy them. Once you've found a token, take note of that max mint size. This is the maximum amount of tokens that you can mint per transaction. Click on mint and then enter the number of tokens you want to mint to calculate the amount of doge that you're going to need. Now go back to your DPAL wallet and click on the icon in the top right to bring down the menu and select on the ordinals button. Next you're going to need to type in the correct text in order to mint the tokens that you want. This is the exact format that you want to use where the only variables are the token name and the amount. Those are the only things that will change no matter what you're minting. If you want to mint a particular token, you'll need to put that token name in the token name section and the amount that you want to mint that's no more than the maximum amount. So let's use this FIWB DRC20 token as an example. You can see the supply is 1 billion and the limit per mint is 50. So if you were to click on the mint button from the DRC20 website, you can type in the maximum amount if you plan to mint the maximum amount and click on calculate doge to find out how much doge you'll need. Now you have the token name and the amount to insert into the text into your wallet. So for token name you'll replace that with FIWB and for amount you'll replace that with 50. So boom there you go that is the current Bitcoin ordinal iceberg but this new token standard is sparking new innovations in the crypto space and the iceberg will probably continue to expand. Bitcoin, however, is a huge economy in itself and the security of the Bitcoin blockchain is attractive to digital asset investors and speculators. So I expect ordinals to continue to rise in popularity and I'm keeping my eye on this space and staying diversified. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next VV Drop Day live stream. Later.